every team is hard work, determination, sweat, and pain. Toshiba America Information Systems and Mitchell salutes the effort, the persistence, and the spirit of South Dakota's young athletes. Those Kello cameras set up by the Kello crew, and we're glad to bring you this State B Championship weekend. Eureka, Tulare, and Emery have earned their way onto Kello Land TV tomorrow night as we'll bring you the semifinals. One more entrant in the semis to be determined. Armor. And we don't know who it is yet. Braylon DeSmith. <laughs> We've got eight minutes to find out as the Bulldogs lead it by three to start the fourth. As we start the fourth, the double-A has just gotten to halftime. Roosevelt 28, Mitchell 21. 28-21 Roosevelt. Dobson a little better rhythm on that one. And 03 opens up a six-point lead now for DeSmet. Biggest of the game. Last two baskets by Dobson have been three-pointers, right? Yes, back-to-back, -back, 14 for Jeremy. Jason Peters triggers it into Austin Ledebor. 7.30, and they got poked away. McNames. And a foul by Peters as Hind was still on the floor, I think. But still, McNames with another foul, or another uh, steal. Boy, he's, what, close to eight in the game? Went ones that he has caused anyway. Went over and told Marv McKean, I should have taken that one in myself, but the unselfish McNames gives it up to Hine, who will go to the line. And McNames prefers the pass to the shot. Austin Ledebor checks out. Chris Peters back in for armor with those four fouls. As Barry Hine puts himself in double figures, 10 now. For the Cedar. And all of a sudden, DeSmet has run out to an eight point lead, 50 42. 16 turnovers through three quarters for Armour. Knocked away by Hine. Jeremy Lawson, who had the great first half, has been a pretty quiet second half, yet to score in the second half. He had 10 before the break. Nine for three. Oh, all over the place. Nice fish and dead and bring. Here's the Smet a 10-point lead. The pack, you need a basket. Armor needs a hoop. It was only a three-point game just a minute and 20 seconds ago, or 2.20 ago. And again, the turnover that Grinnell Blander had dreaded. Up and, and there's the charge. Jason Peters stepped in and took it. Close against Hine. Coach Blander wants a timeout. 6.30 to play in the fourth. It's a 10-point game now. Let's take a look at the... Norwest stat board through three quarters, and the one I want you to check out before you look at anything else is way to the right side. The Smith has doubled the turnover ratio, and Coach Glanzer uh, harped on it a little bit at halftime. When they turn the ball over, you don't get any offensive flow, and the Smith gets points. Armour has more field goals, three more field goals, but those turnovers have made the difference, and the Smith with a seven-point edge at the free throw line. And there's a little turnabout, finally, for uh, Chris Peters. He makes McNames pick up the foul on the block. Second foul on Josh McNames. Little boy with the presence of mind to pick it up. But it's brought out by Dobson, and they're going to get him for the foul. Or the uh, travel, rather. Save is good by Dobson, and the Bulldogs come away with it. They want to push, as always, Hine with the pull-up. And Hine.
Ryan with the bucket. 12 point to Smet lead. They have made the run here in the fourth. 54 42. There's the time remaining fourth quarter. What's unusual about Barry Hine is, is that he generally hits more three pointers than two. He's only got the one three pointer, but 13 in the game. We talked a little bit about it before. The uh, character on the team is Barry Hine. <laughs> Tell us about this commercial that Barry Hine makes. But, uh, you know those, uh, the ones, the shoe commercials that Dennis Hopper does, making a big deal about, uh, wow, I'm holding somebody's shoe. But well, he does that with Josh McNames because McNames has had uh, most of the press and he's the top player on the on the team. He'll go, you know, I'm holding McNames' <laughs> shoe. Or, uh, I, it's a pathetic attempt at being uh, Dennis Hopper, but I hope you, you get the uh, the gist of, of the character of Barry Hine. That was a pathetic attempt, wasn't it? <laughs> I thought it was pretty close, actually. Oh, Jeremy really? Larson, first two of the second half, gets it back within 10 now for the Packers. They're down 54-44, 540 to play. Fourth quarter, Dannenbring baseline. McNames, 15 now for Josh McNames. So I can quit this gig and start doing commercials? Is that what you're saying? That's, uh, yeah, that's what Oh, okay. <laughs> the truck says I better keep my day job. Austin Letterboard. Did they count the hoop? It should count. The basket. Yeah, the basket will count. That's a three pointer. And the foul. It was against. Dan let aboard the three-pointer. Okay, so the three-point goes in. Look for number 15 for pushing underneath. That was where the foul was. So you saw the left arm come down to the foul. Dan the call was made and the, goes against Adam Dannenberg. Third, so Larson goes back to the line where he's three for three now in the fourth quarter. That three cut the lead to seven, the two free throws. That's a glad, three. Uh, really a five-point play. The two free throws cut the lead to seven. Five minutes and five seconds to play. Barry Hine from 18 feet, and Barry's starting to feel it a little bit. Boy, after struggling in that first half, it has to feel pretty good for Hine to get a couple of shooters' rolls like that one, and they got 15 now. 15 for Hine. This is Jeremy Larson who's starting to heat back up a little bit. Six quick ones for Larson, 16 in the game. And that three-pointer from Ledebor on the foul is the only other basket for Armour. Otherwise, it's been Larson's show here in the fourth. They were down 12 a few, just not even a minute ago. Back to a seven-point game with four and a half to play. Peters will push it up to Sanders, which should be an easy two. Brandon with 19. Armour calls the timeout. And it's back to a five-point game, 58-53. Chris Peters doing the work, the sophomore in the defensive glass after the nice mick and the miss, and or the look, I should say, by Dobson. But there, the look ahead, the pass ahead, and Sanders lays it in. He has got 19 points in the game, and what quickly was a double-digit lead is now closed. It was 12, it's now 5, 58, 53. Check your NCAA scores as Dannenbring puts himself at 10 for the ball game. Back to 7 is the lead at 60 to 53. The Cowboys leading Drexel early. Again, and they're going to get the block. And Larson, Darren, Darren Larson. Larson. <laughs> Bern Bernal and, and uh, Marv are kind of giving each other a couple of looks out here. <laughs> well, it's kind of fun watching the coaches. The basket counted for Chris Peters, so he will shoot the three-point attempt, but it's taken down by Dannenberg. That cuts the lead to five with 3.45 to play. And the calls have been consistent. 
Yeah, no doubt about that. So McNames with that five-point lead will try to run a little patient offense. This is Darren Larson to McNames. Ross Cruz is on the bench right now for DeSmet with four fouls. That's a dangerous pass taken away by Tony Knorr and taken right back oh. by McNames, taken back by McNorr. <laughs> <laughs> and McNames just fouled Knorr to not give up the easy two. Boy, that thing was a wild foul. That just almost steps on it, hits the heel of Dan and Bring and pops right back to the freshman and McNames just says, hey, I'll take the foul. Let's stop this craziness and go to the line. But back at the other end to start all that. Nice anticipation by Tony Knorr to get out in the passing lane. It was a little bit of a lazy pass and he picked it off. The freshman Knorr leads Armour in free throw shooting percentage. 74. Five points it stays at for Tony Knorr. But he gets the pack back within four. Three minutes to play, fourth quarter. The winner of this one will face Emery tomorrow night in the semifinal. Smith trying to work a little clock now. McNames from 16, no, it's corralled by Chris Peters. So the Packers can cut into that four-point lead with a hoop here. To Sanders wide open underneath. That ball was, one for Brandon. That thing was almost going out, out of bounds, and Sanders pulled it back and had to pull the ball so almost behind his head to flip it in. Dismet wants a timeout. They're hanging on. 228 to play in the fourth. Here's that last exchange. And oh, I think you know, I thought the thing when it left the hand of the passer was going out and this. One hand up there from Sanders, so Sanders takes the right to control it, and then underneath had to hold it off to the side a little bit to pop it up and in. With 21 points now for Brandon Sanders, three shy of his average, but the way this game is going, it's he's far and away the leading scorer. Two minutes, 28 seconds, up on the clock, and it's. Time to say in regulation, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be safe, huh? A two-point lead, 60 to 58. There's what we have left to play in regulation. McNames on the drive, a little Ooh. stop and go. Nice move, but it's a little hard. But there is Darren Larson. Four points to Smet advantage. Larson with four. Oh, nice and defense, got a too, piece Larson. Of that one. Larson, I think uh, he lost track of Sanders, but Sanders got the ball just a little bit too slow in that shooting spot. Sanders was able to find where he was and then get back in a good defensive spot. If you want to run a little clock, this is the guy to have out there. One thirty to play. Just met by four. McNames makes it six. No one stopped him. No one came up to help. Six-point lead for Desmet. One fifteen on the clock, fourth quarter. McNames going to be number four on Josh McNames. Well, one of the disadvantages of, of playing from behind like Armour has done and done extremely well here is that when you use your run and use all that effort to catch back up, it's tough to keep it going for that extra oh, two, three, or four minute period to, that you need to, to carry out and get the lead and hold that lead through the end of the game. Jeremy Larson has been perfect from the line in the fourth. Five out of five, so he'll get the bonus. lead back down to four at 64 60 and the Packer defense causes a turnover timeout Bulldogs one a time to we'll talk over the last 72 seconds well what a really I don't nice isn't the right word but it just uh, a 
Nice Enjoyable comeback. Game yeah. to, to watch here. Uh, By Armour. Just as the uh, DeSmet defense has led to a lot of their offense, the Packers have <laughs> stayed close and made runs at that DeSmet lead with their defense. You can see how much on that replay that Coach Planzer is into this game as he is every game. <laughs> and that's a look at the the Smith huddle and the Bulldog cheerleaders. Roosevelt was leading Mitchell at the half. That game should uh, be going again now. But Roosevelt was up by seven. We're getting an update. Oh, nice run by the Colonels. The Colonels have come back to close it to just two. It's 33 to 31. But back to the matter at hand. It's a four-point DeSmet lead, 64-60. There's one minute, 12 seconds up on the clock, fourth quarter. The Packers, who had just caused the turnover underneath the DeSmet hoop, will trigger it in with Letabor to Chris Peters. Josh McNames playing with those four fouls for DeSmet. And Peters up on the rim and gets the roll, cuts it to a two-point lead. That's the time remaining in the ballgame. It's 64-62, DeSmet. Hanging on, Dannon, or uh, Dobson rather. Ooh, almost and McNames are gonna have to get it across the line here. And do and there is McNames at his best. He finds Barry Hine. Sweet pass to Hine. Set it up. Four point lead for DeSmet. Larson on the drive, gets his own rebound. It'll be over the back, Cruz will be over the back. It'll be the fifth on Cruz. So with 26 seconds to play, clock stops as Brandon Sanders will go to the free throw line. There's a good look at the junior, Ross Cruz. Uh, 41 over the top of 42. That's Cruz and Sanders banking away on the board. Cruz fouls out with four points. And Adam Dannenbring will go to the table to check back in. Brandon Sanders waiting at the free throw line. To shoot the one and one. Armor down by four, 26 seconds left. Sanders with 21 to this point, and that was a big miss. Brought down by Darren Larson. And they'll put it in McName's hands and let him do it. And the foul is on Sanders. That's a good play. If you don't make the free throw, you have to stop the clock. That's the play you need to make. We look at the 5'9 senior, Squirt, <laughs> is the nickname. So McNames a 71% shooter on the season. One in the bonus. Josh's great-grandfather, Corliss Johnson, is watching, and recovering. Uh, he's been sick, 90 years old, watching down in Mitchell. His nickname, Corliss, is short, and Josh's is squirt. End of the third quarter now. Roosevelt back up by seven, Tom. End of the fourth quarter here, and Smet back up by six. McNames with six in the quarter, 19 in the game. There's your tally, 21 seconds up on the clock. Harv McCune just wants to make sure that the timeout situation after the game, we will rejoin Pat O'Brien and the CBS crew on the road to the Final Four, get you caught up on what has happened today around the nation in the NCAA tournament. That will be followed by Land News at 10 with Steve Hendrickson and Angela Kennecke. And then you MASH fans will get your fix. After that, all coming up after the game, the Bulldog fans thinking maybe they've got this one where they want it. 68 to 62, DeSmet leading. 21 seconds left. 
take care of the basketball is what Marv McCune is yeah, telling the telling, kids. I, th I think he would uh, be best to say just all wall on the for you. Give it to Josh. <laughs> That'd be the easiest way to wrap that up, huh? Armour has just chipped away and hung in there and stayed close. They have not had the lead since late in there, early in the second quarter. Sanders for three, not going to go. Get his own rebound. Two good looks, but in go. And Chris Armour Peters. needs a three. Short Metabor is going to get it to go, but with just six seconds left on the clock now. Still a four-point bulge for DeSmet. Austin Ledebor with 10 now. But time is running short. Six seconds left. You need two possessions. That's the hard part. That's the hardest part for Coach Glanzer right now is the six seconds you need two possessions. Four points with the three-point play is the magic number now. And or we've seen it sparingly over the, yeah. over the course of the season, the four-point play, the three-point shot where you get fouled. But don't count on uh, Marv McHugh not mentioning that in the, <laughs> in the huddle right Just now. Scenario, don't no. foul anybody on a three. After, uh, well, we saw two last week, two four-point plays. Marco and I did out at the State A. Doug Brown from Red Cloud, I can recall one of them. And Jesse LeBeau had the other one. Six ticks left. Just met up by four. Look and for the instant foul as soon as it's inbounded. Dobson has the opportunity to, to move if he wants it. Barry Hine will go back to the free throw line. Fouls That's on Chris Peters. That's the game. Hine has, has played well and scored well, especially in the second half. Barry couldn't have felt too good about the uh, five points he had at halftime, but really Josh McNames on the defensive side I think is what uh, helped turn it around. He had a bunch of steals in this game and McNames kind of picked up his scoring in the second half too. Barry Hine with 17 thus far. He's a 73% free throw shooter, best on the team. 18 now for Barry. Five point lead, four seconds left. And DeSmet is going to go on and play the Emory Eagles tomorrow night. That's going to do it in our fourth and final quarterfinal game at the Big B Tournament. DeSmet will move on with a 70-64 win over the gallant armor Packers. They hung in there, could not get over the hump. So Marv McHugh's team will move on and play... Chris Jensen and Emery tomorrow night. Eureka and Tulare, the other semifinal game. And Lee Timmerman has the player of the game. Squirt is standing by. Lee, what do you have to say? Well, Josh, uh, Josh McNames, I thought defensively, and, and a lot of the steals you helped create really got the momentum going on your side. When you got armor into a few turnovers, you guys started to flow, didn't you? Well, our, our defense really had to crank it up tonight. We, our shots weren't going out early, so, yeah, we got a few tip balls in the first half that kind of kept us in the game since our shooting percentage is so bad. But uh, overall, I guess it turned out pretty well. <laughs> and you, you go into tomorrow night that's... Uh, Last year you had a championship from the B, but it had a consolation in front of it. So this means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yeah, this will be our second game against Emory, and uh, it'll be a tough game. Chris Chance is a heck of a ball player. Uh, let's come out, hopefully can contain him a little bit, get some easy breaks, and then see what happens, I guess. All right, congratulations, Josh. Thanks a lot. Josh McNames, his team. It's Wade.